Hello, everyone. Um, it's Mr. Grimes. Welcome back from break. Um, you probably don't know this, but you missed one of the most important days of the year on Saturday, which was my birthday. Um, so I'm now officially 32 years old. It's kind of crazy, but I feel the same. Um, yeah, it was kind of a weird birthday, but it was also sunny. So I got to go outside and um, feel the sun and that was nice. And yeah, I don't know. I'm holding up okay. Kind of bored of this, but I think things are getting better in Massachusetts, it seems. The disease is getting less intense, and I think that's because of all the sacrifices that we're making by staying inside. So keep it up, keep doing it. I know it's hard, and I'm really proud of you. Um, let's talk about this week's lesson. Um, so this week we are moving on to a new topic. Um, we are going to talk about rights. Um, I'm sure you've heard of rights um, in your history classes at times before, but we're really going to dig into what makes something a right and why is it so important for something to be a right. And we'll do that by studying um, women who fought for their right to vote um, about a hundred years ago. And we we'll use them as an example for understanding how you get rights and why rights are really so important. Um, and these pictures on the screen are actually pictures of the women who were pushing for this right. Um, and we'll talk more about them. So this week you have three choices. Um, I want you to do one of these three assignments. Do it completely, but you only need to do one of these activities for the week, and that will count for your history grade. Um, the first is you can do the lesson that I prepared about women getting the right to vote and rights in general. Um, this will connect to some of the other lessons that we'll be doing in future weeks. Um, your next option is to pick a topic that you want to learn about and share that topic with me. And I will do some research, find some sources, some things for you to read, and then you can read those things and report back to me what you've learned. Um, so, a great option if you want to learn about something different and you have an idea of what that might be. Um, and the third option is for you to spend some real time, probably two hours, reading the news this week. Um, I've got a little chart for you to fill in and some ideas of some news sources, um, but if you're really just interested in what's happening in our world right now, this is a great way to check it out and I'll give you credit for it. Um, so pick one of these three things. You only need to do one of them. Um, and then when you're done with it, you hit submit. I'll grade it. Perfect. Speaking of grades, um, we don't know yet about how grades are going to work during this school closure. Um, I hear we're supposed to have a decision soon. They haven't made it yet. I'm sure you're frustrated. I'm frustrated. Um, it seems likely to me, though, if I had to guess that at least some of this work is going to count for your grades this semester. Um, so I would recommend you sticking with it. Um, can't tell you exactly how it's gonna break down or be calculated, but I think um, you will get a better grade um, if you are doing this work. The second reason I think this work is important is you need to keep these skills active in your mind, um, keeping up your reading levels, pushing them higher, keeping up your writing skills. Um, these are things that if you're not actively using them, they kind of wither away. Um, so keep them up, keep practicing. Um, these are skills that are gonna matter throughout the rest of your academic career, throughout your life. So. The grades are very like in the short term, but these skills are actually long term, really important for your success. Um, and the last thing is we're going to be learning a lot about different rights you have, um, the way the government works. Um, and I think now is like maybe one of the most important times for you to be able to advocate for yourself as a citizen, as a young person, as um, a resident of the United States that um, in times of crisis, big changes start to be made um, after every war we've had, after um, other big disasters, that there's been real changes in our society. And some of them have been great, and some of them have been not so good. And I think it's important that we're paying special attention to our world, to our government, in a time of crisis, so we can make sure that good things are the outcome for from this really tough time. 
So that said, I want to start this week's lecture on women getting the right to vote. Um, so if you are joining from the slideshow, um, or sorry, joining from the assignment, um, this would be like step three, I think, of the first activity, the one where you take the notes, um, and it's called Why Rights Matter. Um, so the first note, please write this down in that top box. Um, rights must be given to you blank, while blanks can be taken away. So rights must be given to you no matter what, while privileges can be taken away. So this is the difference between a right and a privilege. Both rights and privileges are things that probably make your life better, are things that make you happy or let you be your best self. Um, but there's a big difference between them. Rights cannot be taken away no matter what. So for example, um, we have a picture of Martin Luther King here, right? Um, and he is exercising his rights to free speech. And the people there are exercising their right to gather in an assembly. Um, they were saying things that made the government really uncomfortable. They were directly challenging the government and the government's racism. But the government couldn't tell them they couldn't speak because they had a right. They were allowed to be there no matter what, saying what they wanted to say, because that's one of the core rights we have in our country. Even if the government doesn't like it, they can't take that right away from you. Um, same with the woman on the right side here. Um, she's an attorney, a lawyer. Um, when you are arrested for a crime, you have a right to have an attorney represent you. No matter what, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to, even if you commit a horrible, terrible crime that everyone hates, you still get an attorney, no matter what. It is a right. On the other hand, there are some things that people like to do that aren't rights, that can be taken away. So in the bottom picture, I'm trying to show, for example, you do not have a right to play your music as loudly as you want, wherever you want. If you're walking down the street at two in the morning with you know, your music blasting super high out of these massive speakers, the government can come stop you. The police can tell you to turn it off, to put it away, can force you to turn off your music. You do not have a right to blast your music as loud as you want whenever and wherever you want to. Playing your music out loud is a privilege, but it can be taken away. So that's the really important thing, that rights cannot be taken away while privileges can. There's a small exception. If you are convicted of a crime and put in jail, then you might see some of your rights taken away. Um, but in general, let's say, assuming you haven't committed a crime, rights cannot be taken away. Um, the next important thing to know about rights is that having a right means that you can blank the government protect you. Having a right means that you can demand that the government protects you. Um, if for some reason the government breaks your right, then you can actually take the government to court. You can sue the government and force them to protect your right. This happens all the time. So on the left side here, you can see like a picture of a courtroom. Um, there's some judges sort of on that back um, bench. They're listening to someone's argument about whether their rights are being broken or being followed. Um, this man on the right side, um, his name is Thurgood Marshall. He is one of the most famous civil rights lawyers in American history. He is the one who argued um, at the Supreme Court that black students had a right to an equal education with white, with white students. In other words, they couldn't have segregated schools. Um, this is the Brown v. Board of Education decision. And the courts agreed with him. And because they thought that there was a right to equal education in the United States, the courts got rid of segregated schools in 1954. Um, so this is an example of real times when people have used the fact that something is a right to go to court, to argue about it, and to force the government to change. The third note. Um, throughout history, different groups have fought to blank rights. For example, women didn't get the right to vote until blank. So throughout history, different groups have fought to expand rights. For example, women didn't get the right to vote until 1920, exactly 100 years ago, 
from this year. It's the 100th anniversary of women being able to vote in the United States. Um, so the first part of this note, as we know, American history is messed up and there have been um, various groups throughout history who have been mistreated, who have not had rights. Um, and so part of the story of America is the story of fighting to get more people, more rights. Um, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and the civil rights movement is maybe one of the biggest examples of this, but we've seen it throughout history. Um, the right to not be enslaved, for example, the right for um, people to vote, even if they're not wealthy. Um, all sorts of rights have been added on over the course of American history. And those rights get added by fighting, by protesting, by um, having boycotts, by having sit-ins, by um, getting public opinion, forcing politicians to listen to people and ensure that their rights are protected. Um, and women in the early 1900s are a very good example of pushing for this right. Women were not allowed to vote or they could only vote in a few states out in the West, um, but through lots of pressure, they got arrested, they sent to jail, they went on hunger strikes, they do all sorts of intense stuff to put pressure on the government to give them the rights that they deserve. And it happened and it worked. And in 1920, they created the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, which said, you get to vote regardless of your gender. Um, so there you have it. Um, these are the notes you need to understand our reading about why women were fighting for the right to vote. Um, and these are gonna help us understand as we look at other rights over the next few weeks, um, why rights are really, really important. Um, so the reading you'll do next is Why Do Women Want the Right to Vote? It's by a famous um, women's rights activist named Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, always email me, comment in the Google Classroom, send me a text message, show up to my office hours, my like open question time, and I'll do my best to answer your stuff. Um, I really miss you. Um, good luck on this assignment and stay safe, stay strong. Yeah. You're great.